We've talked about a lot of things in our first eight lessons, so I think it's a good idea to review everything and make sure that we're all comfortable with exactly where we are right now. So we'll spend lesson nine, this lesson, reviewing. And let's pay very good attention, real close attention, to the steps that we take and in what order we take them when we analyze a sentence. So let's follow the same kind of system we were before. You analyze the sentence, come back, and we'll check it together. So stop the video and come back when you're ready. Millie is taking the next few days is taking off the next few days at work. At work is the shifter. Is the X word is Millie. And Millie is the subject. It's between the two X word places. Taking M place is empty. And taking off the next few days is Y. Is ties with the subject is ties with the present and is ties with the verb taking the ing form why is a verb phrase no time let me rewrite the why so that we can continue analyzing that part taking off the next few days taking is the verb the particle is off it goes together with taking off it creates a special meaning it means that she's not going to work and what is she taking off the next few days that's the object and that's a noun phrase stop the video Come back when you're ready to take a look at the next sentence. Her mom asked Millie to visit her in Monterey. Did her mom ask Millie to visit? Her mom did not ask Millie to visit. Her mom is the subject. Everything left is the predicate. The M place follows X, it's empty, and asked Millie to visit her in Monterey is why. Asked ties with the past. It's the past form. Why is a verb phrase with time? Rewrite the why. Asked Millie to visit her in Monterey. Asked is the verb. There's no particle. Millie is an object. And Millie is a noun phrase. To is a particle. And it goes together with the base form that follows the object verb phrase no time base form and that's what we've been calling the to infinitive of English the complement place is empty School is not always the most fun experience. No shifters. X word. X word place. School. Everything left is the predicate. The M word is not. There's a second M word always. And everything left is Y. Is ties with school the subject? is ties with the present there is no verb what kind of a phrase is the most fun experience the head is experience and that makes it a noun phrase let's rewrite the why 
the most fun experience. The verb place is empty. The particle place is empty. The object place is empty. The most fun experience is a compliment. And the head is experience. It's a noun phrase. Okay. Come back when you're ready for the next one. Nowadays, an education can greatly increase a person's salary. Nowadays is the shifter. Can is the X word. I bring it to the front to make the question, can an education greatly increase a person's salary? And that shows me the subject. And everything left is the predicate. M is greatly, and Y is everything left. Can ties with the present. Can ties with increase. That's the base form. And Y is a verb phrase, no time. Next, we rewrite the Y. Increase a person's salary. Increase is the verb. The particle place is empty. A person's salary is the object. That's a noun phrase. And the complement place is empty. Okay. Analyze the next sentence and come back when you're ready. Susie stumbled upon a small purse at the bus stop by her house. And I could see there are a few different ways to think about this. I'm going to say there's no shifter. If you said by her house is a shifter, I could accept that. It's just a different way of thinking about it a little bit. But I'm going to say there's no shifter, and this is how I think I'd like to analyze the sentence. There's no X words visible, so I use did because the verb is stumble. Did Susie stumble? Susie did not stumble. Susie is the subject. Everything left is the predicate. The M place is empty and stumble upon a small purse at the bus stop by your house is why. This sentence has only one tie, stumble. It ties with the past. And so this is the past form of the verb. And because Y is headed by the past form of the verb, it's a verb phrase with time. I'll rewrite the verb, the Y, that's my next step. Stumbled upon a small purse at the bus stop. by her house. Stumbled is the verb. Upon is a particle because stumbled upon really is a has a special meaning. Stumbled means to kind of to fall, but stumbled upon means to find by accident. And that's what we're trying to say is that she found by accident a small purse. So upon goes together with the verb to create that special meaning. Now, what did she stumble upon? A small purse. That's the object, and that's a noun phrase. And I think all of these words go together is one phrase, at the bus stop by her house.
And that makes this the complement in its prepositional phrase. Okay, come back when you're ready for the next one. Syntactic analysis, like what we're doing, reveals the hidden structure in a sentence. So I'm pretty sure that uh, before we started this class, people weren't thinking about sentences looking anything like this at all, were you? Syntactic analysis reveals the hidden structure in a sentence. For me, there's no shifters. The X word does. Syntactic analysis does not reveal. And so the subject is between the two X word places. And everything left is the predicate. The M place follows the X place. The Y follows M. And now let's look for the shift for the ties. Reveals ties with the subject. Reveals ties with the present. This is the S form of the verb. And so why, because it's headed by reveals, is a verb phrase with time. I'm going to rewrite my Y. Reveals the hidden structure in a sentence. Reveals is the verb. The particle place is empty. And the hidden structure in a sentence is one phrase. It's the object. It's a noun phrase because structure is the head. Come back when you're ready for the next one. Summer break usually comes at just the right time. At just the right time, summer break usually comes. So the shifter, X word does, summer break does not, and summer break is the subject, the predicate, usually is the M word, and comes is Y. Comes ties with summer break. Comes ties with the present. And comes is the S form of the verb. So Y is a verb phrase with time. I'll rewrite the Y. Comes. Comes is the verb. Particle, object, and complement places are all empty. Everyone likes to have a vacation once in a while. Once in a while, everyone likes to have a vacation. X word, does everyone like? Everyone does not like. Subject. Predicate. M place and Y. Ties. S form. Verb phrase with time. Why? Likes to have a vacation. Likes is the verb. 
2 is the particle, have a vacation is the object, verb phrase no time, have is the base form, and with 2 it forms the 2 infinitive. Stop the video, do the next one, come back. Okay, it looks like we have a WH question here. Why do birds have feathers? Do birds have feathers? Birds do not have feathers. Birds is the subject, predicate, and we can analyze it this way. Three ties, present, in place, y, and this is the base form. And we're going to be doing this a little bit differently because I started out differently. Instead of writing the answer, I just directly started to analyze the question. But we'll see that it really doesn't matter. Verb phrase, oops, verb phrase, no time. It's the base form. Let's rewrite it, the Y. Have feathers. Have is the verb. The particle. The object. and the complement. Now what we did in lesson 8 when we were looking at these WH question words is we were thinking, you know, we were asking ourselves what place in the, in the sentence does Y express? And we did that by answering the question. So if we wanted to, let's maybe we should answer the question. Why do birds have feathers? Birds have feathers because feathers help them to fly. Now, where, what part of the sentence does Y express? This piece, because feathers help them to fly. So Y expresses the shifter, and that's where the trace is found. The trace is actually in the shifter place. Well, here's another question we can work on. What is the origin of cacti needles? Maybe, why don't we answer this one? The origin of cacti needles, and I wonder if you know this, the origin of cacti needles is leaves. That's where cacti needles um, evolved from, from just leaves. So let's do our analysis. Is the origin, the origin is, here's my two X word places, Predicate is ties with cacti needles. The origin, excuse me, is ties with present. There is no verb. The M place is empty. And leaves is a noun phrase. Okay, now let's rewrite the Y. Leaves. And although leaves looks like a verb, it looks like the S form, we can see that is is the X word, ties with the subject. Leaves has no ties at all, so it's not a verb here. It's a noun phrase, like we said. So the verb place is empty. The particle is empty. The object is empty. And that leaves leaves 
as the complement. It's a noun phrase. So what's our answer to this? What does the question word what express? What expresses the complement? In the complement would come right over here. That's where we'd find the trace. Okay, stop the video. Come back when you're ready for the next one. Students never fool around in the front of the class. I don't think there's any shifters here. Do students never fool around? Students do never fool around. Students is the subject. The predicate is fool around in front of the class. Never is the end. And fool around in front of the class is why. Now let's see, are there any ties? Yes. Students fool around. Fool ties with the subject. Fool ties with the present. This is actually the no s form of the verb. So why is a verb phrase with time? Let me rewrite it. Fool around in the front of the class. Fool is the verb. Now around is the particle. Because fool around, around goes together with fool to create a special meaning of act silly, uh, act without really uh, immaturely maybe. But f around is a particle that goes together with the verb fool to create that special meaning. Now, there is no object in this sentence, but where do they fool around? In the front of the class. That's the complement, and it's a prepositional phrase. Okay, stop the video. Go to the next sentence. We just have a few more to go. We will finish these sentences in a few more minutes. In a few more minutes, we will finish these sentences. Will is the X word. We is the subject. And the predicate is everything between. Will ties with the present. Will ties with finish. Finish is the base form. And I forgot the M and Y places. The M places here between. And finish these sentences is Y. Finish heads this phrase in Y. It's a verb phrase, no time. And now we'll take a closer look at Y. Finish these sentences. Finish is the verb, no particle. These sentences is the object, it's a noun phrase. The complement place is empty. Last one. I love to watch movies on my flat screen TV. I don't think there's any shifters here. The X word do. I do not. I is the subject. And love to watch movies on my flat screen TV is the predicate. Now the M place is empty. It's right after X. And that makes Y love to watch movies on my flat screen TV. Love ties with the subject. Love ties with present. 
that makes it the no s form. Why is a verb phrase with time? Let's rewrite the why. Love to watch movies on my flat screen TV. Love is the verb, to is the particle, and the object is watch movies on my flat screen TV. There's our object. That's a verb phrase, no time. It's headed by the base form, and the base form is what I need to put together with two to make the two infinitive. So I hope that these sentences well, went well. And even if you had some uh, places where you weren't sure, it's possible that you might have analyzed the sentence differently than me, but that's okay. As long as you can explain what you did, it's possible. So why don't we do this? Let's stop talk about it, make sure you're comfortable, and then we're going to be ready to continue with our ninth, with our tenth lesson.